Hi. Have you ever wondered why there is no VIT in generators? What is the difference between VIT and uh, Super VIT? What are the criteria for good combustion to take place inside the cylinder of a diesel engine? What are the factors uh, which uh, determine the timing of fuel injection? We will attempt to answer all this uh, and uh, many more starting from this video. Since the video may become uh, very long to focus and digest the content, we will cover it in uh, two parts. Part 1 will deal with uh, basics of fuel injection and timing and need for VIT. Part 2 will uh, cover the differences between VIT and super VIT and methods adopted in uh, Bosch pump for the implementation. There are two motivating factors behind the making of this video. Firstly, many subscribers uh, requested me to make a video on this topic. Secondly, with a lot of effort, uh, I understood this topic. I hope I understood it correctly and I think it's high time I make a video before the whole topic becomes irrelevant, you know. Nowadays, they are talking about these alternate fuels and uh, non-fossil fuels, etc. Wonder what will be the logic of uh, combustion in those fuels. But I guess as far as we are looking at the compression ignition engines, uh, it should not change. Anyway, since I am uh, not a great student of this subject, I would uh, not like to comment on the same. Please do put in your opinion on the same in the comment section. This is a very complicated topic and I am afraid if I will be able to do full justice to it. Let me try my best. I also believe that if you understand the basics of combustion, then it would be very easy to understand the algorithm for combustion in electronic engines, which will be the future. You are watching Chief Engineer's Sea Time Talk and I am Ramesh the pilot who will navigate you through this channel. If you really like the previous videos and have not yet subscribed, please do so. Let's move on to the control room and understand the topic in great detail. Keep watching. Have great fun. Thank you. Here you can see a swing and you are supposed to keep this kid entertained. Well, it does not matter whether it is your kid or your sister's kid. You will forever be that Santa Claus uncle who will appear once in a few months with lots of gifts and your leave time will be consumed with these activities if you are not preparing for exams. You can see that if you want to keep the swing continuously swinging, you need to push it at a particular time. This is exactly where you need to give the push if you want to give the maximum effect. But suppose you try to push it here, it will not be so effective. And here it is just not going to work. It is going to be tougher and tougher to push the swing and give that momentum. You cannot transfer the energy you have to the swing because it is already having a very good speed. Secondly, if you try to push the swing before it comes to the top position, for example, on its way up here, then you know what is going to happen. You will in fact be opposing the movement and stopping the swing. Simple. This in fact forms the basis of combustion for a compression ignition engine. Here you can see that the piston is coming up and you want to have the forces of combustion gas exactly here here so that the force will be able to push the piston on its way down. That is when the piston has exactly crossed the TDC and on its way down. If combustion happens here, the entire energy will be transferred to the piston. But if the combustion happens somewhere here, when the piston is already on the way down, then the entire energy will not be able to be transferred to the piston. And again, if the combustion happens when the piston is on its way up, for example here, the force of gas will be opposing the movement of the piston and the engine will stop. So for an engine to work smoothly, we need to ask the two questions. How much of fuel should be injected? Well, this is easy. The amount of fuel injected should be enough to release the energy to match the load on the engine. The next question is, 
when should you inject the fuel and where should you inject the fuel with respect to the pistons position in the cylinder now this is the more challenging part to understand this in great detail we need to understand a few more concepts the first term we need to understand is the self ignition temperature when the piston is going up compression happens and the gas is getting heated up now the temperature of the gas is increasing self ignition temperature is that minimum temperature at which an injected fuel will be able to ignite now the you see this is where the gases are hot enough such that if you inject a fuel the fuel will be in a position to ignite the attainment of this temperature of gas in the cylinder depends upon compression pressure and the amount of cooling which happened during the compression stroke this obviously depends upon the rpm of the engine and the pressure available in the cylinder at the beginning of the compression stroke that is the scavenge pressure more the rpm lesser is the time available for cooling and hence the self ignition temperature will be attained earlier that means the rpm is getting more and more the self ignition temperature will be earlier and earlier the next important definition for us is the ignition lag or ignition delay now the piston is going on its way up and somewhere we are going to inject the fuel you see here the fuel is going to get injected at this point so as soon as the fuel is injected it will not ignite even if the self ignition temperature is available it will only ignite after a particular time now this particular time is called the ignition delay so let's see that happen the fuel got injected at this point and it is still not burning the piston meantime travels up touches the tdc and comes down and then on its way down combustion happens you see this the combustion happens so now this particular time which elapsed between the injection of the fuel and the actual burning is called the ignition delay having understood the concept of ignition delay we can appreciate that if the combustion is to happen just when the piston is crossing the tdc we need to inject the fuel while it is approaching the tdc that means just a few degrees before the tdc this is the angle of injection so at what angle should we inject the fuel what are the effects pros and cons what are the limiting factors this is the question we are going to handle shortly we have all the basics required to understand the more complicated issues with respect to combustion of fuel in engines here you can see the full cycle of combustion now i am going to show you exactly that you can see that this is where the self ignition temperature has been attained but then i am going to inject the fuel at a particular place not here exactly the injection should be such that suppose i inject it here it should be such that as the piston goes up it is still not burning you see firing can happen only when self ignition temperature has been reached so the piston is still going up touches the tdc and on its way down you see the combustion has happened where just when the piston has crossed the tdc and this is called the ignition delay combustion should happen immediately after the piston crosses tdc for maximum energy transfer so and then the cycle continues now the trick here is to time the fuel in such a way that after the ignition delay the actual burning of the fuel happens just when the piston is on its way down now what happens if the rpm of the engine is very very less you can see that the self ignition temperature has been attained the injection has happened and combustion has happened before the piston has crossed the tdc rpm is so less that combustion happens before the piston has reached the tdc now the engine cannot start so this is the engine is stalled so that means there is a minimum rpm which is required for us to make the engine get started so every engine will have a minimum rpm at which it can start at this rpm the piston is able to cross the tdc 
by the time combustion happens after the ignition delay. Now this uh, becomes the firing RPM of the engine. If the engine cannot be cranked up to this RPM by whatever means, the engine will never start. You can feel all this practically and physically when you start a lifeboat engine and emergency air compressor engine. So when you advance the fuel injection too much or the engine has not uh, cranked up to the required RPM at the point of injection, the engine will stall or not pick up. Now let us see what is happening here. The piston is going up. Self ignition temperature has been attained. Fuel has got injected. But the RPM of the engine is so high that even after the piston has crossed TDC, after a long time after the piston has crossed TDC, the combustion is happening. Combustion is happening after a long travel of the piston after TDC. So the entire energy of the combustion cannot be transferred. Hence the exhaust temperatures will be higher and we also see after burning. So why is the exhaust temperature higher? Because the entire energy is not got transferred to the piston. The gas is still having energy which is not got to the piston. So it is manifesting itself as heat energy and the exhaust temperature is higher. So it is not running at full efficiency. Now let us come back to summarizing our learnings. A diesel engine piston is going up and I will have a self-ignition temperature being attained at the particular point. Now this depends on the RPM. If the RPM is more, it can be attained here. Why? Because scavenge pressures are more at higher RPMs. And the time available for cooling the gas is also less. So we cross this point and then we come to a point of injection. Correct? We have this point of injection. Now this point of injection should be so manipulated that depending on the RPM of the engine, when the piston is just about crossing this TDC and coming back, I need to have the combustion. Now this depends on the quality of fuel which is the ignition delay. But when the RPM of the engine is more and I continue to inject the fuel at the same point, combustion will happen much later which will result in a loss of efficiency. So if I want the combustion to happen when the piston is just crossing TDC, I need to advance the angle of injection. And this how much I need to advance depends on the RPM of the engine. We can advance it with some limitations to some extent because the self ignition temperature also is happening earlier. Now you can see that having advanced. So as I am coming up and now I am injecting the fuel earlier. So what is happening? The piston is able to cross the TDC and the combustion is happening exactly after the piston has crossed TDC here. So I am getting back my efficiency. So that means at low loads, the engine tends to become inefficient if I do not advance the angle of injection. Here you should be able to appreciate the fact that in a generator engine, the RPM remains constant. So there is no fear or loss of efficiency due to late combustion. Hence the need to advance fuel as the RPM increases does not arise. So there is no requirement for this new term I am going to introduce, VIT. So this very fact that when the RPM increases, I need to advance the fuel to maintain the efficiency. This is forming the basis of variable injection timing. Hold on, hold on. It is not over it. It is not that simple. There are still, still a lot of complications which we need to handle. We will see the implementation of this and the limitations and other constraints in part 2. We will also deal with the concept of VIT and super VIT in the next video.